Welcome to Lap Napkin. Today I have put together three stories for episode 18 of r slash Entitled Parents. So hit that thumbs up, smash that subscribe button, and let's get into it. Entitled Mom is pissed off. I didn't spend enough money on her son for Christmas. Hey guys, this story is from two years ago. It happened around the time I first moved to Vegas. I have a cousin who has seven kids, and since I had just moved, I hadn't seen them since the youngest was in diapers. Now this cousin also has a sister who has exactly one kid. For that one kid, she gets food stamps, child support, and she doesn't even work. She's the type of person who trades their food stamps for cash and blows their money on stupid stuff like trips to Cali and weed. She literally only cares about someone if she can use them. Mind you, my cousin with the seven works her butt off. She's a little embarrassed that she gets government help because she feels responsible for having all seven of her children. No matter how hard she works, she makes enough for bills and the food stamp she gets buys just enough food to last the month. Growing kids eat a lot. Mind you, I was 20 turning 21 and I always had hella money left over after every check. My bills were paid on time and I would help my mom from time to time. We visited the kids one day and the third youngest told me that Christmas was coming but he knows he wasn't going to get anything from Santa but he's excited that they get to eat good food on Christmas. Kids live off of ramen and ravioli. This shattered my heart. All of her kids are well behaved for the most part and they deserved a good Christmas. I started asking them all what they wanted. In order from oldest to youngest, Dax wanted headphones and a new sweater. Jen wanted a sweater and nail polish. Darren wanted a football and cake. JR wanted a soccer ball and cake. Z wanted Transformers and Power Rangers. Nana wanted My Little Pony. Jay wanted anything Paw Patrol. Names are changed, of course. So I talk to my cousin in Spanish since the kids don't understand it yet, and I tell her how I will take Christmas off and how I want to take her kids for her. She looks like she wanted to cry and thank me, and told me she would try and pay me back. I told her no. She stated that she would pick up any extra shift because she still wanted to get them something. So I got paid and I gave myself a $40 limit per kid. I got each kid two big presents from Walmart, and with the remaining money, I got them all small stuff from the dollar store. Her kids appreciate everything you get them. The two that wanted cake, they got cake. I even put a bow on that bad boy and we hid it behind the milk and the eggs in the fridge. Now I guess my cousin told her sister cause I got a call from her sister and this is how the conversation went. AC entitled cousin, me, me. GC good child, his mom is a piece of trash, but he isn't. Entitled cousin, hey, Chris told me you were doing Christmas for her kids. Me. Yeah, they're spending Christmas Eve at my house. Mom's cooking dinner and we open presents the next morning. Surely you have room for one more. Are you talking about good kid? Of course I am. Alright, drop him off Christmas Eve night so we can eat and watch movies, then pick him up in the morning. No problem. Mind you guys, after buying the kids their presents and my parents theirs, I was a little broke. Entitled Cousin called me the day before Christmas Eve, so I scrounged what I could and got Good Child some dollar store toys. Christmas Eve comes and my mom picks up the seven and brings them to the house. They are flabbergasted by the presents under the tree and in the stockings with their names. The older ones goofing about who got what. I wait for an hour or two and Entitled Cousin never brings Good Child. So we feed the kids and start watching movies. After about three movies, all the kids pass out to food comas. The next morning we wake and there's no word from Entitled Cousin. The kids start diving into their presents. JR and Darren have some Christmas cake and they share with their siblings. Everything is in full swing, then banging on the door. I open it and I'm not really happy. Me. Why the heck are you banging on my- Oh, it's you guys. Why didn't you bring good child last night? Entitled cousin. Watch your mouth. I got busy and we couldn't make it. 
You've said worse stuff in front of a good child. You want to come in? Sorry, we don't have time. Can we just get his presents, his meal, and go? His meal? Yeah, your mom cooked. Yeah, last night. You were busy and the kids ate it all. You didn't save good child a plate? You never bought him, so no. Whatever, just give us his presents. Good child looked like he wanted to stay and play. I felt bad for the kid. I walked in and swam through wrapping paper till I got to good child's presents. They were small, so I put them in a gift bag. He opened them on my porch and his eyes lit up. Good child, whoa, a ninja and a wrestler. Oh, silly putty. I got a puzzle. I love this. Thank you, Momo. I got a little glump. I hugged him back and said, Merry Christmas, entitled cousin. That's it? I gave her a look, trying to compose myself. Anger meter rising. Me, what do you mean? Cousin, how much did you spend on them? None of your business. You know, you are selfish. You bought them these cheap ass toys so you could buy Chris and her kids all that stuff. Let good child have one of each of their toys so it's fair. Anger meter explodes. Are you insane? Closes door and covers good child's ear. It's Christmas. Be glad I bought anything at all. You only ever call us when you want something. You rob your son of a good time because you only care about yourself, and it's not fair to him. You spend your money on bullshit when you have a whole child to care for. You only have one child, and because you milk your baby daddy, that poor soul pays hella money for his son, but you spend all that money on your nails and weed. How about you act your age and be responsible for once? Entitled cousin looked shocked. Who do you think you are? A woman who didn't try to trap a man by getting pregnant on purpose. A woman who doesn't get assistance but pays taxes so lazy girls like you can feed your kid. A woman that bought your kid Christmas presents because I wasn't selfish like his mother. Entitled cousin looked like she wanted to hit me. She would have swung if my mom hadn't come outside. Entitled cousin is intimidated by my mom. She takes good child and leaves. She ended up moving to Chicago to mooch off her mother now. I hope good child is okay and that he doesn't pick up her horrible habits. She tried to stop me from saving a man's life. I worked in an emergency room ER for six years, so I'm full of stories. But when it comes to entitled people, this one sticks out in my memory. P, patient, ED, entitled daughter. CP, critical patient, me, me. Every person who has worked in the ER knows that Mondays are the busiest of the week and also when all the crazies come out. This day was no different. I worked as a nurse in triage, where you initially get assessed in the front before going in the back. Here we determine who needs to go back first and who can wait. We had a few stretchers in the front for people who needed to be monitored a little closer or needed IVs, blood draws, labs, etc. There were six stretchers, but this day was so busy all six stretchers were filled plus five more in the hallway. This lady comes in on an ambulance, but because her symptoms didn't indicate an emergency, she was put in a stretcher triage to wait her turn. She was in a lot of pain. After assessment, I recognized her symptoms as being caused from gallstones. Painful, but in this case, not life-threatening. We put her on a stretcher, started an IV, drew labs, and hooked her up to the monitor just in case. A few minutes later, entitled daughter comes in the front door. One look at her and we knew she would cause problems. She had everything from the shoes to the haircut. A classic rich Karen. When she saw that her mom was still in the front and hadn't seen a doctor yet, she started screaming that she knew the CEO of the hospital and that we would all be fired if we didn't get her mom back to see a doctor right now. We explained that her mom has a history of gallstones. An even patient was saying that she had this pain many times because of the gallstones. We explained about being really busy and that there were no rooms available in the back and we'll get her back there as soon as we could. She eventually calmed down but was still antsy. 
About an hour later, another patient comes in and was put in the stretcher besides patient and entitled daughter. This patient had worrying complaints, but on initial assessment, we could not find anything wrong. Now as a nurse, you learn to always trust your gut. When your gut sounds an alarm, you listen. Something about this patient was setting my alarm bells off, but all his vitals were normal, and I had no solid evidence to declare him an emergency. I hooked him up to the monitor and kept a very close eye on him. I let the charge nurse know of my concerns and she said to let her know as soon as something changes. Not five minutes later, something changed. Now at this time, I could explain that this hospital was a level one trauma center, meaning that we get all the bad cases from the car crashes to gunshot victims. Since we had to be ready for any traumas, life-threatening injuries, we had a room with three beds that was closed off from the rest of the beds because traumas usually involve a lot of people and a lot of blood. Even on busy days like this, one of those rooms were empty unless there was a trauma patient. Now, back to critical patient. I was taking vital signs of patient when I looked over to critical patient. I noticed a worrying change in his heart rhythm and stopped with patient to start assessing critical patient to see what was going on. That did not sit well with Entitled Daughter. She actually grabbed my arm and told me to finish with her mom. I jerked my arm free and said I had to make sure Critical Patient was okay. As I turned around to Critical Patient, his rhythm went into VFib, life-threatening rhythm. With VFib, you literally only have less than a minute for life-saving interventions. I called the charge nurse to inform her of Critical Patient's conditions, all while unhooking Critical Patient from the monitor and throwing his bed in the drive. As I started pushing him back to the trauma room, Entitled Daughter actually jumps in front of the stretcher and stops it. She's screaming that her mom was here first and she needs to be seen before the critical patient and starts screaming that I was a liar and she was gonna get me fired. I'm usually a mild tempered person, but knowing critical patient was literally seconds from dying, I said to Entitled Daughter, you have a choice. You get out of my way or get run over, as I started pushing the stretcher forward. Now, I'm really good at pushing stretchers fast and getting the patients where they needed to go in a hurry, one of the reasons I was part of the trauma team. Entitled Daughter tried to stand firm, but she saw I wasn't going to stop and jumped out of the way as soon as I was an inch from hitting her. Unfortunately, she did not move fast enough, and I ended up running over her foot which I found out later broke two bones. At this point, I didn't care. I got the patient back to the trauma room, leaving Entitled Daughter screaming, lying on the floor. We spent about 30 minutes on critical patient, but he ended up dying. By the time I got back up front, patient and Entitled Daughter had been taken to the back to see a doctor, but my charge nurse warned me that they were filing a complaint against me. A few days later, the actual CEO of the hospital came to visit me on my next shift. He was known to be a kind and fair man. Since this happened during a time before cameras were put into the ERs, he had to take what happened from word of mouth. Apparently, Entitled Daughter said I assaulted her several times and put her mom's life in danger by not assessing her properly and that I should be fired. Turned out that patient did actually have gallstones and nothing else. I calmly explained exactly what happened and that Entitled Daughter's actions might have ended up in critical patient dying because of the delay she caused by her actions. When I got to the part of what I said to Entitled Daughter and running her foot over, the CEO actually started laughing and then tried to cover his mouth to hide his laughter. He explained that Entitled Daughter was a friend of his sister and he knows what kind of person she is. Not only did I not get fired, he put a personal note in my file praising my actions. On my next review, I got a large praise, plus a bonus, thanks to the CEO's note. Side note, the hospital gave an award twice a year to two employees that exhibited excellent skills in their profession. In my review, they informed me that I had won this award because of the CEO's note. It came with a $500 bonus. Entitled Kid probably got nightmares after Entitled Mom demanded that her son plays a game on my computer. Cast me, me. M, my mother. EM, my aunt. EK, most annoying kid in the universe. Entitled Kid. 
Some context backstory. I still live in my parents' house since my university is really close, so I don't need to get myself an apartment. The story happened about a year ago. The story. On a beautiful Sunday morning, I got woken up by my mother telling me that she has invited my aunt with her two kids for lunch. Now, to be honest, I never liked that particular aunt that much, but what can you do? So about two hours later, the family comes over. We have our lunch, and afterwards, we sit around the living room and chat about. At some point, I noticed from the corner of my eye that one of the kids, EK, was going into my room. Now, I had my computer open, and I was a bit afraid that he might do something to it, so I followed him. Now, that kid was about 8 at the time, and he should in no way be allowed to play violent video games. And me, being an avid gamer, most, if not all the games I had installed were rated as PEGI 18, meaning they were to be played by people over 18. The conversation went like this. Entitled Kid, Do you have any games? I do, but they're not for you. Those are grown-up games. But I want to play. I'm sorry, but you can't. At this point, the kid runs out of the room and to his mom. Entitled Kid, OP does not let me play games. Entitled Mom to me, Come on, let him play some games. He has nothing else to do. Me, the games that I have on my computer are not for his age. They are violent and disturbing at times. But my little boy wants to play. Can't you help him play? I'm sorry, but these games are not for your child. Excuse me, we are guests, and you have to do what we say. Just let him play. At this point, I've gotten really angry, and in hindsight, I should have just opened a Flash game website and let him play. But this computer was my most prized possession, having built it myself with mostly my own money. And I would not let an 8 year old play freely with it because I was afraid that he could damage it. Also, my malicious compliance side came out at that moment, so I didn't want to pass on the chance for some good old malicious compliance. I say okay to both mom and child, and take the kid with me. I open Outlast. For those who don't know, Outlast is a horror game with many disturbing images and scary scenes, especially for an 8 year old child. And let him play. Not even 5 minutes in, I hear a scream from my room and see Entitled Kid running, crying to his mother. Entitled Mom, what the hell did you make him play? What's wrong with you? I told you before, my games are not for young children, they're for adults, but you wouldn't listen. The mom straight up picked up her children, one still crying, and left the house. After I told my mom exactly what I did, she burst out laughing. Learn to listen to people when they warn you. Well, that about wraps it up. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed already, hit that subscribe button and bell. By the way, I just started a Discord server for anyone looking to be part of the Laugh Napkin community. Link in the description below. See you next time!